Oh, and welcome back. So we're going to move, we're going to continue our data, stabilized up data analysis series, for want of a better term, um, by looking now at the isotopic food web. So we're going to use a lot of the same tools that we used in the in the previous demonstration around the isotopic niche, but here we're going to expand it a little bit to look and survey a population metrics to look at the overall community metrics. Um, and here we're really focusing on what we're kind of described in class as what's commonly referred to as the, the layman metrics. So things like food web breadth, food chain length, food web size, things like that that are of, of interest depending on your project. So again, as we've done before, I'm not going to go through the um, the details of what all of these mean, what they what they are, what they reflect, what they represent, and what they don't represent. Right now, really, we're just going to focus in on how to calculate the actual values. So I'm going to we're going to follow the same format we did before. I'm going to share screen, and then we're going to have a look at some of how we do some of this stuff through OR. Okay, so as before, I think I mentioned this last time, we're going to work with the same or you mean, in fact, you can even use the exact same or project within the, within the same folder here. Um, but this time we're going to run a different markdown file. We're going to run the uh, foodwebmetrics.rmd and we're going to be using a slightly different input file up here, which is the cyber underscore com. We have Skype the cyber. Uh, I might change that to cyber populations, but now we're looking at cyber underscore com here. OK, so. Here's one I made earlier. OK, we need to scroll back up a little bit. Uh, what we're looking at here is the. Um, oh, I'm just going to close that down and get that. OK. So again, we have our or script and set up ready to run. Everything is here in GG, not GG, excuse me, in or studio. Um, and we're kind of modified this again from an example by Andrew Jackson. And here's his, um, a, a link to his website where he goes through this in a bit more detail. But you'll see as we go through this, a lot of it is very similar to what we had with the, um, with the niche width stuff, but rather than looking at the, um, uh, populations we're now going to look across the community okay so as before we need to load up the packages again cyber and because of a little bit of plotting we've got ggplot2 and then we want to load in the the actual data set cyber dot underscore com um let me have a quick look at that make sure it comes as it should be and a quick plot and let's have a look at the by plot here and I just want to show you two things when this comes up. OK, so first of all. Exactly sim similar to what we saw before, different fish species are sort of colored in different colors, but the invertebrates here we've grouped as by depth rather than by taxon. OK, and we can talk a bit about sort of why we did that. Um, there's two there's two reasons. One we're primarily interested in or we know from the previous from previous preliminary looking at the at the data I remember we saw those depth related variations in 15n or in carbon and particularly in 15n so we want to be able to encompass that when we look at the at the food web size we'll see another reason that this is important when we look on another little bit, and that's that we have enough replicates within each of these depth groups, enough replicate samples. So we're pooling all invertebrates and looking at invertebrates at depth rather than a specific invertebrate taxa, and we're keeping the fish as a separate taxa. So let's pop this in and see how it goes. So the first thing we need to do is a little bit of symmetry. Should be gone is bring in our create the, the the community so create cyber object from the community remember the preceding one we separated this out a bit so we just took out the the species we were interested in but here we're looking at everything so we're going to create something with the the entire community and the first thing we get is a warning with some text here and essentially this is telling us that at least one group has less than five observations 
So this is crucially important to us for us. In fact, bear with me one more way to get rid of this. Symbols of start deep. Yeah, okay. Won't we'll be interrupted by emails. Um yeah, so because we're estimating a distribution at each node, we can think of each of these groups as a as a node in the food web. And what we want to do now is to look at the food web size based on the geographic distribution of those nodes within isotope space. But we're not going to do that by just looking at the actual data points because we're taking the, the Bayesian approach with, with cyber. We can, we're estimating the distribution of each of those nodes. And to do that, we need to have at least a mean and a standard deviation. And to do that, we need at least to get that, we need at least three data points. So we can only do this where we have three data points for each of those nodes. And that's another reason that we've done this based on putting the invertebrates by depth, because we don't have more than three of each taxa at each depth. So again, this is a something to bear in mind if you're at the start of a project and thinking out your sampling strategy. If you want to do these food web metrics and go into a great amount of detail, you're going to have to make sure that you have enough samples at each site. And that has to be at least three. Yeah. OK, one of the nice things here is that it actually gives us a it tells us that this could be an issue and it tells us how to check whether it's an issue. And there's a nice little code in here that we can just call sample sizes. And this will basically give us a list or a sort of a matrix here. We've got all our groups by the and by community. And we're looking at how many samples we have for for each group so we got the warning told us that we had less than five in some groups and we can see here bmi at one meter we've got four bmi at three meter one leg we've got four so i'm happy enough to go on with this if you have three if you have two you can't do it if you have three it's enough but bear in mind that you're you're you're, you're pushing it right 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 at the end right right to the limits Anything else on that? Yes, one other thing on that. If you don't have any, yeah, so you've got, say, for example, in one lake we have BMI at zero and another lake we don't. One of these lakes we got brown trout, another we got burbot, and um, the other lake we did not. Okay, that's okay. We can still compare these, but we just leave that node out when we make the comparison. So we need to run this so we do some of the the basic version first and then we move on and do the Bayesian version the same thing that we did last time okay so we can put all this in and press go and essentially what we're going to do first of all is generate those plots similar to last time and then get the the community metrics together first so here's our figures here's our first plot and essentially what you'll see here is that we've overlaid the two lakes, one over the other, and we're looking at these holes here, and this is the hole that defines sort of that total area. And one of the first things you might notice is that it doesn't necessarily go to the, the outer extremes. This hole is based off the mean value for each group. So let's take this endpoint here, and you can see this endpoint is the mean of those three triangles falls around about there. OK, so we're looking the holes being made based off the mean of those three points of, the, of that distribution. So. <clears throat> we want to then get our community metrics just for this. And we can get that. So straight away here, very, very quick and very easy. We've got these single values for dy range, dx range. So here, essentially, this is our, our nitrogen range, y axis. X range is the carbon axis or carbon range. Total area, distance to centroid, mean nearest neighbor distance, and standard deviation of nearest neighbor distance. And we talked about what these reflect and represent in the class, so we're not going to dive into that in a great deal, in a great amount of detail again right now. But first things to look at, food chain length in both systems seems to be a bit, seems to be pretty equivalent. Carbon range, quite a bit bigger in Lake Vuontus. Remember Lake Vuontus, it's the larger lake, bigger with more littoral, more pelagic 
production, if you remember back to the, the previous lectures or the previous videos. So that sort of that follows through makes sense. If we've got a broader carbon axis and a similar nitrogen axis, makes sense that the um, total area in Lake Vuontis is a bit bigger. And then on the way down, we can look at the, the various different metrics. And again, no, <clears throat> nothing wrong with taking that and plotting, uh, looking at it in comparison to your to your figure as well. And here we've got Lake Vuontis, wider um, carbon, carbon range. So we're checking things as we go. Everything kind of makes sense. Everything looks about right. Again, the issue with this though, is that it's just a single value and we don't know how variable it is. We've no measure or no estimate of how variable it is. And that's if we want to compare between these two systems. For example, we could look at our you could look at this and say, oh, well, like Kiwi, it's the food chain length is 7.4 per mil, whereas in Vuontis, it's 7.3. Therefore, Kiwi has a larger food chain, a longer food chain than Vuontis. But we need to have some estimate of variability, on so an estimate of error on those, so that we can sort of say, are we 10% certain, are we 95% certain? that food chain length in one of these systems is bigger than the other and similarly for food web breadth. So to do that, similar to what we did with the um, the, the um, uh, niche component, we need to do run the, the model and run the get the, the Bayesian component. So to to do this, we put in the various different parameters for our model. You can read through Andrew's paper and sort of get to some more details about why these are the default settings or why these default settings were chosen as they are. But for now, this is the ones we're going to use. I press go on this and it should run pretty straightforward. It takes a couple of minutes, but not too long. And again, we're calculating each of these metrics across the community. It's going to take a bit longer than it did for the um, for the niche width, but not terribly long. He said, hopefully. OK, well, that's churning away. We're going to scroll down to the next little piece down here. And OK, <laughs> maybe we just let this run. Won't take long, honestly. There we go. Told you it wouldn't take long. OK, no warning messages, no complaints, no problems. <clears throat> So we're we're good to go. So we've now created a new object called Cyber C example, and we've got ellipsis posterior, and we want to start extracting some of the information from this. And we've got a couple of different calls that will allow us to do this. So we're going to get a couple of pieces of information. The first thing we want to do is we just want to plot out the um, the various different metrics for each community for each lake see how they compare, and then we're going to try and compare specific metrics between lakes, and then we're going to look at some of the actual, how we get at the actual data. So we're going to start with some of this just to start pulling some of this out. Run this here, and this is our layman B, so essentially what we're doing is we're calculating the, the Bayesian estimates of the, the layman metrics, and then we're going to plot these up with one of these nice cyber density plots. We do this here, and let's say we're there is a bit of flexibility in this, so we can do, see we've got a lot of big, big, great big bulk of white empty white space up there that we don't want. So let's change our y axis here to around about 65, 0, 365. We run that again, okay? So it's taking it makes everything a little bit clearer. So we've got our our nitrogen range, our carbon range total area and centroid distance and so on. So a couple of things that are very obvious at first. Total area is going to be much larger. These things aren't really on the same scale as each other because, for example, total area is a function of the food chain length and food web breadth. So it doesn't it's not surprising that that's quite a lot larger. Also, we've got the, the gradations that we saw in the, um, the niche width example previously. So we've got the circle here is the mode value. Then we also have our 50% credibility interval. 
75% credibility interval and 95% credibility interval. So now we've got this estimate of error that we can use to calculate the um, <clears throat> to estimate whether thing, one thing is actually larger than the other or not. And as before, oh, shoot. we should be able. Yes, we are able. OK, we can add the estimates from the, the non Bayesian approach, say, to this. And like we said, they should fall very close to the, the mode values. And what we can see here is that they pretty much do. So again, we've got confidence here that everything is working pretty much as it should be. We can now run the exact same thing here for, for the next lake. And we've got now Lake Vuontas, pretty similar values. So alternatively, so what if we want to do an actual comparison between between systems? Yeah, so again here we can just by changing the, the call around a little bit. So here what we're doing, we're doing a cyber density plot, but we're binding together from Lehman metric for, for like one total area and Lehman metric for group two or for of like two total area. We're labeling these Lake Kiwi, Lake Vuontas, putting some other characteristics into the um, <clears throat> into the plot, Y limits, things like that. Play it through, let it run. And here we can see Lake Vuontas. It's an easy way to make that comparison between the uh, between the two systems. Um, what do we need to say about this? With this, we can kind of estimate that it does definitely does appear that the 95% credibility intervals do not overlap, or at least they're very close. So we're getting very confident now that Lake Vuontas has a larger food web size than Lake Kiwi. The next thing we may need to do or may want to do is get the actual data. It's all well and good to be able to generate these plots so then we can have a look at it and see what works and what doesn't work or get a, a get our own inference and take these data and plot them into a um, put them into our figures. And again, this is total area. We can do the same thing with any of these metrics. Say here we want to pull out food chain length and do a comparison between the two there. Now we're able to say that the Kiwi Lake Vuontas, and what we might even want to do is we let's just bring it up a little bit. We don't need that to be zero. Oh, we do need to let's make it between six and nine. I think that should just about get everything. Okay, so now remember we said oh Lake Kivi, we weren't it was slightly larger than Lake Vuontas. But if we look at the distributions, the estimated distributions, remember we're 95% certain that the true value falls somewhere within this bar or that bar. We're pretty confident that there's no big difference in food chain length between those two lakes. So if you're looking across multiple different systems, this might be an approach you want to take. Again, you probably possibly need to think about, or you need, well, you do need to think about how you're handling these data. We talked about this in the, the niche width video. That making comparisons between lakes is, or between systems, is tricky because the baselines, the actual isotopic distance between the various different baselines of that food web, or the sources of the food web, the primary producers, differs. So you're not necessarily reflecting a difference in diet, a difference in isotopic niche width does not equate to a difference in dietary niche width. In the food food web metrics here, maybe you can you can certainly make an argument for trying to understand what's relate, what's driving those differences in um, be, between baselines, yeah, and the isotope ratios of the different primary producers. If you've got food chain length or food chain length as a function of lake productivity or breeding colony and birds or I don't know, whatever it is that you're interested in looking at. This could be a way that you can look at multiple different sites together and get a comparison across some kind of continuous variable, or some factor that you think might be having an effect on uh, food chain length or food web size. This is a tool that you can use to pin that down. Yeah. So next thing, that's sort of some nice plotting functions. 
let's say we want to pull out the actual data. So here, similar to before, we're going to pull out the, the modes. Let me set up the virus warning. So pull out our modes. And what we've got here, we've got a bit more information than we had the last time, but it's kind of similar. We've got Y range, X range, total area, and so on for system one. And then we move down here to system two, Y range, X range, total area, and so on. And then we could do the same thing here for our credibility intervals. Pull those up instead. And what we should see any minute now. Any minute now. There we go. Is Y range lower and upper, 99, 95, and 50% credibility intervals. And so that's confidence range around those mode values. So 95% certain that the dy range, food chain length in system one, they give you, is somewhere between 6.8 and 8.1. Scroll down and we get the same values for Lake Vuontas, 95% certain, it's somewhere between 6.5 and 8.5. Scroll back up. Those values pretty much match up with what we see but we're getting that output directly to us from, from the cyber package. And again, one last thing to remember, don't report that beyond one decimal place because your, your instruments are not that precise. And that is pretty much how that works, to be honest with you. Let's see what I need to do. I'm gonna bring this one right back up again. Stop sharing. OK, so yeah, so that's how we calculate isotopic food webs, similar to isotopic niche. We've talked in class about sort of what they mean, how they work and what they are, but that's how you get the values. So yeah, I'll hope, hope you found that useful. Any questions, we can chat about it during the week. All right, all the rest.